One man says his video camera is the only reason he is not in jail tonight. He not only avoided criminal charges because of this videotape, what it shows has led a police department to change its policy and to arrest an off-duty deputy. The Channel 4 I team's Dennis Ferrier now with the tape and the story. Well, Earl Lewis has been recently handcuffed twice by two separate officers in two different jurisdictions. He's been beaten. He's been arrested. It sounds bad until you look at the tape. And all of a sudden, Earl Lewis isn't the bad guy. Get the audio in it. Earl Lewis has no criminal record. He tries to never get too excited. After all, he's a heart transplant survivor with three back surgeries and two knee surgeries. He's a little fragile. That's why his confrontations with police seem so out of character. Very cooperative. Uh... Former roommates Earl Lewis, Danny Givens, and Danny's daughter Amanda were all living at this house. Amanda moved out. But when she decided to come back for her things a month later, her mother asked her to get what they call a civil standby, where a police officer stands by to make sure nothing happens as you move out. Keep in mind, there had never been a single domestic call to this house. Being a daddy, do you think that I'm going to let somebody bother my daughter? Dixon police officer Scott Hull came to the house with Amanda, but listen to his recordings. He doesn't identify himself to the homeowner and just walks into the house. Never told me who he was. He never told me why he was here. He, I asked who was he looking for. He said nobody. He was non-responsive to any of my questions. So Earl Lewis says he doesn't know a man is in the bedroom until it's too late. Hands up. Get your hands, boy. You better get your hands up. When Officer Hull realizes Earl Lewis has a gun, which he legally owns and carries, things get heated. You better stop right now. I was bent back so far that I could feel bones grinding. I was really in fear of Earl's life. That I thought I thought that, there, that he was really going to hurt Earl. Finally, roommate Danny Givens grabs Earl's video camera and turns it on, and everything de-escalates. Hang on, listen to me. I understand that, and I'm going to work with you on that. But when I got your hands secured and you start pulling away, I've never pulled away. You pulled away. Okay, I you never. I don't know. You pulled your hands away. Okay? Nevertheless, they wonder. Why did Earl Lewis end up handcuffed on his own couch? If an officer can walk in your house and do what they've done, they could, they'll do it to anybody. That's just the way I feel. And I feel like every, every, it really makes you feel like you're about that tall when somebody comes in and does something like that, because especially when you hadn't done that. Only after Earl Lewis is handcuffed and the videotape is rolling, does Officer Hull tell Earl Lewis why he is in his house? Okay, I'm here to do a civil standby. I don't know what's going on. The TBI investigated the incident and found no wrongdoing that Officer Hull was invited by Amanda, who used to live there. Nevertheless, Dixon Police Chief Rick Chandler has changed Dixon policy because of this incident. There should be communications. There should be communications. Officers must now identify themselves and cannot enter homes without the homeowner's permission. By the way, the first officer responding to backup was a county sheriff's deputy named Kenneth Brown. Why do we mention that? Well, I don't know what I don't care. Is she Fast forward a month. It's February. Amanda is now living somewhere else. Earl and her dad come to pick her up for an appointment, but she's not there. The homeowner arrives upset. It should be here. Get out of here. Homeowner Nick Jackson appears to have a heart attack. Oh. Who hit me? Nobody, Nobody hit, you. hit you. It's OK. You better get, get out Nick, of here, Earl. Nick, Come get out of here, Earl. You better call 911. Nick, Remember that off-duty deputy at Earl's house on the other call? Here he is again, Deputy Kenneth Brown. Get that camera away from me, son. Get it away from me. Earl keeps taping and tries to leave. I've been ordered to move out of here, get his foot out of the way so I don't break his legs. No, you're going to stay right there, Hot Rod. Jackson appears to recover from his heart episode. I got you, Nick. Why don't you take what I you've done to my child? I got you, Nick. Come on. Come on, Nick. Come on, Nick. Hey, you better get your camera out of my face. And then appears to attack Earl Lewis. Oh, 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 oh. Now here comes Deputy Brown again, taking Earl to the ground. 
While Deputy Brown holds Earl and calls for backup, Nick Jackson appears to start kicking Lewis in the face. We got, I'm we just got, detaining him. Hey. Danny Givens can't believe it. Why didn't that officer make him quit kicking him? Off-duty Deputy Kenny Brown has Earl Lewis arrested for a double assault, assault on Brown and Nick Jackson. And that's where it stood, until authorities finally looked what was on this videotape and everything flips. All charges against Earl Lewis dropped. Now Deputy Kenny Brown and Nick Jackson are charged with assault. If I had not had that video camera, I would have been the one that was charged and I would have been found guilty. I'm telling you, if it could happen to this man, it could happen to you, it could happen to anybody. The attorney for Deputy Brown did release a statement this evening, quote, any statements made by the parties implicating Mr. Brown in any wrongdoing is clearly in contradiction to statements made to officers on the scene investigating the incident. Mr. Brown denies any wrongdoing and looks forward to his day in court. That's from attorney Olin Baker. Tonight at 10, you will hear from both officers' bosses about both of these incidents.